Hi, I'm Annie and I'll be reading the Alabaster arc for the first time in this video. I have now read the first, well, up until chapter 171, so that's chapters 155 to 170 of the... And I do not know whether it's the Arabaster arc or the Alabaster arc, because I've been calling it the Arabaster arc but literally here at the back of the book, it says the straw hat pirates finally arrive in Alabasta. I'll be calling it Alabasta, I suppose, at least for this update. And then I'll be doing some Googling because I got confused. I'm really glad that I kind of read so far into the arc. I think I'm about fourth way into it. No, I think it's, no, I'm like a third way into it about because I think my, opinions kind of really they farmed much better during the last couple of chapters because when I was going into the arc I was going into it a bit hesitantly I was like I think I'm gonna enjoy it the Alabaster Arabaster saga has been a bit of a hit or a miss I mean it's kind of been a miss like it's been a fine miss but it's been a bit of a miss so I was not sure whether I would actually end up enjoying where we were gonna go because so far I wasn't really vibing with baroque wax i think that's the name of the firm i've been kind of lukewarm on them it's not like one where i've been like disinterested in the baroque wax as a villain as an antagonist but i kind of didn't really have any opinions about them but this far into the arc i'm actually kind of really vibing with the dynamic i think i've written down like two of my last notes i've been about Ooh. I'm vibing with this. I'm really vibing with where the plot is going. I'm gonna now go in chronological order because that was, that was nothing, was it? Oh yeah, one note I made quite early on was that I really like it when there is some dynamic elements going on within the villains themselves. Though, so the only conflict isn't, you know, baddies versus the goodies, but there's conflict, there's inner conflict within the villains and within the good guys, which we are also seeing with our rebellion that we're entering. I'm gonna come back to that later. When we first saw it kind of like that within the Baroque works, not all the characters, you know, not all of them got along. There was some conflict. Not everyone was agreeing and still hasn't done that yet. I was really vibing with them. Then we obviously, quite early on met up with Ace and uh I really enjoy I really enjoy Ace as a character I won't lie I felt very kind of disappointed in myself that I'd completely forgotten that Ace was um Luffy's brother he kind of showed up and I was like oh my god you're that character from the beginning and then Luffy's like he's my brother and I was like he's your brother I don't know <laughs> maybe I should be reading these like quick up like the brass said next to each other. I really enjoyed everything we had with him and that's kind of what I'm really enjoying with Oda's um, way of writing where it's like we get these little glimpses of I don't want to say plot outside of our main plot but obviously we've got the kind of the main driving plot of One Piece which is One Piece <laughs> and then we've got their kind of more overarching narratives within the sagas and then we've got the smaller narratives within the arcs themselves and then we've got even like the chapter specific arcs but then we also got this stuff happening kind of in the background that is constantly happening and Oda manages to blend all that together really well where it's like you get really interested in seeing oh like oh I want to return there like yeah we're, we're having cool time here but I also want to I want to see where we're going later and I want to see when we return to these characters and what's Oda gonna do with that and he manages to kind of sprinkle in everything in a way that leaves you intrigued but it doesn't leave you too bothered it's not like why did I forget the saying but he's not like he's not like waving a turkey in front of you that's not the saying but like is it like a piece of chicken in front of a hungry child what is the saying he he you get it. This is so random. I was not ready for Mr. Mr. T. Bon Bon Clay, I think it's his name. Um, it's not that funny. It's not that funny, but I found it too. I've got my, I've got a bad sense of humor. But when Bon Clay enters and he's like, how are you doing? And the barmaid is like, are you an idiot? <laughs> and Bon Clay goes, 
Well, no, Paula dear. I'm gay. I'm not fine. Um. Hey, hi, it's me from the future. In case you are confused, I'm here to give you some context because that is not at all how it is translated in the English version, which I just checked. The dialogue is actually translated in the English version as Bonglé goes, how do you do? And then the waitress is, are you crazy? And then Bonglé answers, I'm not crazy, Bulla. I'm just happy. And uh, yeah, in case that's all you've ever read, you might be very confused as in what I'm talking about. But that was literally how it was translated in the Finnish version. This, I probably took a picture of it. This, this is what I come for One Piece for. Not just this, but like the absurd creatures. I just need to mention it. I'm not gonna get caught up on it. Just mentioning it. I've mentioned this so many times. If you if you've been here, you know I love the creatures. The creatures are my favourites. That is, oh my god, my next tab is literally Kung Fu, Kun, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Meri Lehma, Kung Fu Sea Cows. Um, they were so cute. I can't. Let's move on. Oh, okay. I know specifically when I started vibing with the plot because I've written down a note. You know, okay, I'm really starting to vibe with the plot. And that was in chapter 161. I really, really started kind of liking it when we got, we, when we started getting kind of more of the story with Vivi. And here we get into the fact, okay, first of all, I don't have any context, so I don't know what to say about it, but like when we got into the sandy town and there's this panel, one of my favourite panels of One Piece so far, I don't know, but absolutely incredible just stellar basically what i'm saying is it's the same as it's always been it's when we start getting the story behind the story or is it the story in the front uh, the story like the, f the frontal story is the plot and then the story behind the story is, is the background it's everything that makes it up it's the themes it's all of that that is where everything else goes and i love the story behind the story and i usually only start connecting with the story the frontal story when we start getting the story behind the story and if we don't get that or if i don't connect with what we get when we get that then i will not like the story either i don't know if this metaphor is making any sense but we're starting, we started getting the story behind the story. And that moment I went, I'm here. I'm loving this. Yeah, basically. I don't know where I was going with that. But that was basically my thought pattern. It, like, it's, it's not yet my, like, favourite backstory. It's not my favourite. Actually, it might be my favourite. I don't want to keep on saying frontal story because that sounds wrong. But like, it's not my favourite plot. But it might get that because I'm really vibing with the plot. I don't think it's going to be my favourite story behind the story. Like my favourite background, my favourite theming, all of that. Like Oda has set the bar too high. But plot wise, I really like what they're doing with the characters and how they're going be between these cities and the entire thing with like the kingdoms and the plot to get the king from the throne. And then we've got Vivi's childhood friend, Gunnar, who's gonna lead the, or who's leading the rebellion, at least from what we've seen so far. I'm not going chronologically anymore, but this is just how my brain works. And I'm really, I can't remember his name. Oh, I just saw it. I just saw it. I just saw the tab where we got introduced to him. I really want to meet him. I think from what I've seen of the cover of the, volume 20 we're gonna meet him soon like properly like as an adult and I can't wait whatever dynamic it's gonna be I know I'm gonna love it because like just as a concept I really love that dynamic of them being childhood friends but like of being different social backgrounds the possibility of like friends to enemies to friends even if that doesn't happen but that's like my favorite dynamic of all time probably any kind of conflict when there's like backstory to the conflict and not just like he killed your aunt but no we were friends you know we were close my favorite thing ever so I, I can't wait to see them interact soon i've basically accepted it it's it's confirmed i don't think it's ever gonna change luffy is my favorite character i don't know what i was even like going back and forth with like yeah you know but like he might be like technically the best he's my favorite character i will say officially here yeah, he's like probably my favorite character of the year Whenever I say like, oh, this is my favorite character at the minute, I mean 
behind Luffy. And my favourite character at the minute is Vivi, definitely. I just, I really love him. Like, I've, I've enjoyed Nami, and I think she's still a good character. She's a solid character. But unfortunately, she kind of never reached that point. Okay, she did, because I did say at one point that she's my favourite character. But, like, she kind of went down a bit. And, like, I don't think she's ever... I don't know what I'm saying. I, I, I don't want to say it. No one's going to be my favourite character. Because with Oda, I think anyone and everyone could be. But at the minute, I'm really enjoying what they're doing with Vivi's character. Like, have done much more than what they've done with Nami's character. I think Vivi's character is just the... She might be, at the minute, like, the best developed character. And, like, the best written character within the main crew after Luffy, in my mind. Basically why I went on my Luffy notes is because of that entire Luffy's, what he said. Um, so you're thinking that no one should be allowed to die. Not the people of your land. Not one of us. Not none of us. N no, not any one of us. We're against the usurper. Million dudes are making a habit at, at this minute. And you think you can save everyone. Isn't that, isn't that wishful thinking? People will die. And then the next page, your life is not enough. You should at least stake our lives as well. After all, we're friends. That was the rubbishest translation of One Piece I've yet done, but all of that. Loved it, absolutely loved it, bits. Um, moving on to volume 19. Okay, basically all of my points that I would have had about the chapters I've so far read of chapter 19. I've already, chapters, volume 19, are uh, ones that I've already made with my entire, just about the plot and, and Vivi. But basically I really enjoy where we've come so far with the plot. I really enjoy what's being done with the conflict and the dynamic between the characters, whether that be within our crew, between the villains and our crew within the villains. Oh! And the general whose name I've forgotten, but the smoker. I was gonna say the smoking general, smoker. I really enjoyed that we got him back and he's actually a character that really kind of interests me. Cause like, I originally thought that he was gonna be just like um, a typical villain like we saw early on in One Piece. But is he gonna be more of like, he's, he is an antagonist, but he's not a villain. And I'm really vibing with the dynamic that we've had, I keep on using the word dynamic, but like I really vibe with what is being done with him so far and I'm really excited to see where we're gonna go with that because I can see so many different directions of where the story is gonna go and actually he is at the minute like who's present here my favourite of the antagonistic forces, well okay, I suppose Vivi's childhood friend is at the minute an antagonistic force, but really, really vibing with that. But one thing I did w want to note on that I completely forgot to note on earlier, like earlier, earlier, as in, in my last vlog, is the minisodes, mini chapters with Django, which I have yet so far enjoyed the best, the most out of all the mini chapters, mini sodes, mini storylines that we've gotten so far. Like, I'm I've been really enjoying it and how I know I've been really enjoying it is that I remember the entire plot in my head. This one I've just really enjoyed and I really want to have Django. Like I want to I wanna keep on following Django and it feels like it's coming to an end. And I'm a bit annoyed, annoyed at that because like I kind of want to, I want to keep on going. I want to see like these little pieces of where we're at with him. Basically I think that's, that's all I've, all I've got to say so far. Super enjoying it and I'm really glad to be back with One Piece. You know, I went away and um, now I'm back again because I remember that I promised to give you my thoughts on the One Piece trailer because I did film a reaction to it, which I then I accidentally deleted. I don't mind because to be honest, I, I filmed it because I was like, oh, you know, it would be fun, but I'm not really a reactionary channel and I never wanna be that so I don't genuinely mind but I'm gonna give you my brief thoughts on it. The only the only thing I am kind of annoyed at having lost is my reaction to Sanji going I saved your ass. I was not prepared for that accent and my reaction was uh hilarious but you're not gonna you're not gonna see it. Um that's, that's not very much of worth. I'm I'm really vibing with what we've gotten so far of Zora 
and Sanji. I, I think I'm really vibing with both of those actors in those roles. I think they, both of them like fit the roles, I think quite well. I think Luffy's actor is nailing that kind of quirky, charming innocence of Luffy well, but I don't yet know what I think of him because Luffy's such a beautifully complex character. So like the stakes are high. The stakes are high, my expectations are high. So I don't know how well I'm gonna vibe with the portrayal of him in the end, but we can hope. I think only two kind of characters that we've seen so far that I'm not really vibing with, to be honest, are Nami and... It's like on the tip of my tongue, but it doesn't come out. Basically, to say about Nami is I just... I'm hopeful and I hope the actor is able to portray Nami re really well in the actual show but from what we've seen in the trailers I just it doesn't fit the image of Nami in my mind like at all really. Buggy! Buggy! There it came. I don't know why like. Buggy! I, it's not that it's not it's not the same as with Nami it's mostly just like he doesn't look at all like how I would have envisioned him it's just it's just charming that Bucky is played by like a, I think it's a third like the actor not the character in the show but like the actor is like a 30 year old attractive guy which just feels weird and I don't know but like that's just that's just jarring whereas first time I went and I saw Bucky and I was like who are you played by I didn't I don't think I knew the actor but he looked it looked very familiar it's just like it's just is nothing at all like what I was expecting Bucky to look like. But talking about this stage production, I really like, you know, the kind of the world that we've seen in the trailer so far. There are some scenes that make me go, that looks a bit too fake. Some scenes that make me go, that looks just like the world of One Piece. And it kind of, it looks fake in the way that one piece is meant to feel like. Because it's, it's a bizarre world that there's no world that's kind of like everything meshed together. But like, yeah, I, I think only when we see the final show can we know in the end how well it's gonna work out. But like the look of the show, it doesn't to me have to look absolutely realistic. I think it just has to fit the vibe of the show. Look at early series of Doctor Who. That shit looks bizarre, that looks, that looks cheap. Look at Merlin. It's it's very low budget looking show, but it feels like Merlin. You see that. You never want to have Merlin be like 2023 BBC budget because that wouldn't be Merlin. That's kind of also why I'm worried-ish about the upcoming series I like specials of Doctor Who because it's gonna look too good because how can that be RTD? I'm going on a tangent. I was talking about One Piece. Uh, so yeah, that is like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know even what point I was trying to make. Um, but yeah, the, the outfits with some of the characters, I think they're fitting, the, the clothes are like very fitting. I don't know what is it about Nami, like none of nothing about her character i think is fitting my image of nami i feel very protective of nami at this minute but like her character's outfits look very modern and there was someone else i can't remember someone else in the main cast who had like a very modern looking clothes to the point of being bothersome because it looked like something you could buy off of h and m uh, but basically i'm quite excited i think my final conclusion about it is just i i'm excited i don't think i'm gonna love it i think i'm gonna find it just like good fun hopefully that's how i'm gonna find it i don't think i'll love it like i said i'm kind of fearful of how hollywood -y it looks like that just is just something it's because the style of filmmaking it's made in i know it fits the american family democratic democratic demographic very well but it's just not my style of content. I have probably other thoughts. I have probably had many, many more thoughts, but those are my thoughts basically summarized about the trailer. I'm excited. I will watch it. Oh, maybe. Either, if I have a lot of thoughts, I might do a review. If I don't have a lot of thoughts, I will just include my thoughts within a vlog, but I'm definitely gonna watch it. And I'm still excited. And I'll definitely, I'm ex like, I'm definitely excited about how they're gonna portray just like the world and the stories, especially like Zora and Sanji, I think it's because like those actors, like what I've gotten from the trailers, it's just like feels very fitting. I think that is mostly why I'm excited about that. As, like those two characters specifically within the show. Also, I'd like the characters within the comic manga, sorry, manga as well. Ah! 
that's that's not that's 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 let's do the update like this how how do you do i read my one piece it's not completely straight but that's what we're gonna stick with i'm i'm sorry also i really do hope that the auto automatic focus is gonna stay on me because i haven't got the time or the effort i read further into one piece obviously otherwise i wouldn't be doing this update but basically i i think i'm currently like halfway through i decided to stop at just before chapter 180 because i thought i could read further in but this ended very like fittingly for a for an update because it was like some people mourn battle others fight some pour oil into the flame some know the truth and want to stop the worst everyone has their own goals they're coming together their kaboom happens in our little bar now uh so yeah that felt like a fitting point to do an update i'm not gonna wave these about because every time i wave these about when i'm an autofocus it doesn't really focus on my face so i'm just gonna be looking at you i don't have that many thoughts but that's not a negative that's more so a positive because i'm like solidly evenly just vibing with this story how it's unfolding i like the way oda manages to surprise you even though like sometimes he could like i i've oh, i think i've defended that um, I, I think I've defended Oda's kind of, I don't want to say cliched, but tropey way of writing because it really works. And that's kind of the charm of One Piece. But he still always manages to surprise you. And like one thing I've said before is that his story so often feel like, like of, of course that's what happened. I'm really vibing with what we're doing in the conflict basically. Uh, obviously again like the uh, fighting just fighting scenes aren't my favorites but there's there's not been like that much like on page five 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 scenes that it would bother me or that it would just like bore me actually often they end up concluding in a very interesting manner like with luffy's and crocodile's fight and him impaling luffy i did afterwards get like oh yeah yeah obviously he's i obviously didn't think he was gonna die but like i was like stakes these are stakes luffy is really losing this fight and i really i really like what's being done here in the middle of the story because it's really feeling like a proper mid story conflict where we're, we're knowing where we're gonna go i don't know what i'm saying it feels like a very solid like mid story point and i think um the way that the place that where we're at at the minute it leaves the, the uh, second half of the story feeling pro promising that was not a good sentence i don't i know what i was trying to say but i did not really <laughs> say it well basically i'm really hopeful for where we're gonna go based on where we are at at the minute within the story i'm gonna go through my notes because otherwise <laughs> this is not gonna be good and i know last time i was talking about how i'm really vibing with vivi i'm really vibing with vivi i'm just like so enjoying it with what is being done with her character and her her story because obviously her story is very intertwined with the plot of the arc saga obviously you could say that that is it's the same thing but i don't think it's the same thing when i say her story i must have mean like her inner conflict and how that relates to the plot and i think that is being executed really really well <laughs> to put it plainly and one one scene that i've tapped that i really liked that i think really brought out just how well it's being done is when he, she's just like it's the entire scene basically like the part that i've tapped is where she goes i will kill you the entire scene with luffy and the rest of the crew being trapped and then there is crocodile and he's like you should choose you need to choose and which who do you want to save and it's like i love the way that she's drawn and just like oda manages to convey even before she says anything or like makes any comments or like interacts with the people around her just by the way she's drawn oda really manages to like portray what is going on inside her mind just the conflict within which she's in oh my god i've got nothing to say <laughs> i just love the absurd humor of one piece that is that is what i love about this it's the humor like sure i love all of it i love so much of it but i like the humor i can't really like a lot of the stuff that i tab and i'm like mm -mm -mm, in my head when i'm reading 
our stuff that I can't really just be like, oh yeah, this panel, I really enjoyed that one. This joke, this joke really hit well. Um, Cause like, it, it's just stuff that makes me wanna come back and makes me appreciate this story, but it's not stuff that I can really talk about and be like, hmm, yeah. Sure. I'm really hoping that this is focus on me because if it's not, editing me is just like raving. Literally, all my notes are about the humor. Like I said, I don't have anything to say. I just really am enjoying this story. Okay. I've got it, just like. Anyways, moving on. I bloody love Sanji. My other like major note is about Smoker. I really, really vibe with kind of the antagonist dynamic i was talking about dynamics when i was last year but like the, really the antagonist dynamic that is being done here and i really like genuinely love what has been done with smoker smoker is the kind of a character you need in a story like this he's the kind of a character my mind like explain what type of character he is but this type of a kind of humoristic but very ad uh, adventure adventury and like trope filled in the best way type of a story really needs that antagonist that is not the main antagonist but it's a sideline antagonist that has connection that like like builds connection to the main crew but it's still always the antagonist but there's understanding there and like they have their own reasons and they're not bad guys they're not the villains they do what they do because they think that's right but they also understand flip it a flip that you do or like the main cast does what they do because that's what they think is right or like <laughs> could we say that they do what they do because that's right i mean vivi yeah with the others it's more so good to what they want <laughs> but everyone is driven by their goals like it says at the end of it that's really the story and i really vibe with the way that oda betrays just all these different people all do what they do because they're people Ultimately, those were my rumbly midway through the story thoughts. So, hi, um, this is how much I have read. I know that looks like quite a bit. That is one volume plus two halves of a volume. And I did consider just not doing an update until I was done with it because I'm just about to enter chapter 203, which means I've got 14 chapters left, I think. Um, but I think you can see from the amount of like tabs I have within these volumes versus the amount of tabs I've already had with volume 22 that I don't have much to say about what I read here. And now if you've been here before, you're probably already expecting me to say this, which is why I didn't want to go come and do an update because I was like, I'm going to be so repetitive. It's not like I have something to complain about because if I had something to complain about, I would have something to say but the truth of the matter is i don't have really anything to say and that's just because we've been in 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 the middle of fight scenes basically basically that's it <laughs> I, that was a sound i was not expecting um and like basically all of my notes have been about like random stuff like i enjoyed this giant fish this joke was quite amusing <laughs> so yeah it's not it's not like the fight scenes have been rubbish um again if, you, if you're completely new basically you just the fight scenes they're fine i just they're not my thing within this medium if i were to compare them to fight scenes within other volumes there have been better ones that i've like ones that i've enjoyed much more thinking about some fights with Zora that I've definitely enjoyed more but there have also been a lot of fight scenes that I've enjoyed much less so these are not ones that just leaves, leave me utterly bored like I'm not bored I'm just I'm just there you know it's not like I don't want to be reading it it's mostly just like I'm reading quite fast because I don't know where that sentence was going it's something to like keep me there like really taking in that information very slowly and like digesting it properly but like there have been some like good scenes within each fight like i think my favorite of the fights was probably between nami and miss doublefinger that was maybe my favorite like it was it was the most enjoyable let's say it like that it was the most enjoyable fight scene that was one that like had me like actually invested interested with zora i i didn't really like the fight scene was fine but when we got that background stuff. Wait, I've got a tab on it. Listen, there exists swordsmen 
who are capable of not cutting anything, but they can still even cut through iron with the same sword. Protect that which they will and cut that which they will. <laughs> I, mean, I suppose I should have probably used the word want to instead of will, but whatever. That is the might of the greatest swordsman who can injure everything it touches. Doesn't deserve that name. That, that I really enjoyed, but the vibe before that, that it just, it was fine. It was in like nothing, nothing rubbish, but yeah. And I do remember there was one also scene with Usopp, which was like, yeah, that's a, that's a great Usopp scene, but it's like the fight wasn't anything special, I think. That's basically my opinion about the fight scenes. It wasn't rubbish or anything. I did say that I enjoyed Nami's fight scene the best. I did, I really, I'm really conflicted with Ponkle, Mr. T, because kind of I, I really enjoy him as a character and like that was, there was, I was definitely entertained with this fight scene with him and Sanji, why am I lagging? But that did make me go and read that scene and a lot of scenes with Mr. T, Ponkle online, uh, like reading the English version of it online because they've been translated very differently in Finnish and in, in English. Obviously in, in the English translation as well, I don't really mind, it's like exactly what I was kind of expecting. It's the 90s manga targeted at young boys, so like I'm not surprised at all and I'm not really complaining at all that there's this character who's like this flamboyant, you know, stereotype. I don't mind it that much in the English translation itself. But it's the fact that in the Finnish translation, and this is translated very differently in the English one. In the English one, he's called like Swan. I think that's what he's called. Every time basically he's referred to as a Swan and sometimes through other words as well. In the English translation, he's referred to as gay in Finnish. It's not one that like ruins the character or ruins the story for me. Sometimes it's really amusing. Sometimes I'm really enjoying it. But sometimes I'm like, why do you have to always use that word? Like, is it necessary? It's me from the future. I don't think I expressed my point the best here. So I'll be coming to YouTube, but give you a bit of context. Basically, I wasn't trying to be critical of Bon Clay as a character. I do think he's a very enjoyable character. And I don't think his, like, how he's presented in the story is offensive or homophobic. That is not what I'm trying to say. I would have probably enjoyed, or like, I wouldn't be distracted by the things I didn't enjoy about the writing around him in the English translation as much. But in the Finnish translation, he is constantly, and when I say constantly, I mean every time he talks of A, himself, which is not as bothersome, but B, by, uh, like, referred to by other people, he is referenced as gay. I mean, there's, it's this word used that just means, like, a gay person, but it's not just, it's it's not offensive, it's not like derogatory word necessarily, but it's a word that throughout my childhood, I heard people use as a dismissive word for gay people, or even use as a word to intentionally be offensive or talk about gay people in a very <coughs> kind of manner. So when every page he's on or he's talked about, he's referred to as that, like he's literally written off in like that gay one. It's not quite as bad as saying the F word, but there's also sometimes like literally the uh, Kung Fu he uses, it's called like gay Kung Fu, but like the word used there, if you look at Victionary, one of the words it translates it into, into English, is the F word. So uh, that is a translation, like that is a translation choice made that mostly, it didn't make me necessarily go like mad or like be offended. It kind of just made me go like, what is the point of this? This feels awfully pointless and it just feels a bit like, why? That, that's kind of what I left me feeling like it's why. It mostly just bothered the story that I've could have enjoyed much better if it wasn't constantly on my face. Like, I don't know how it's been written originally in the Japanese, and like, I'm not even, con don't really care how it's been written originally in the Japanese. I'm not calling out anyone, or I'm not like being like, oh, 
you just that's what I'm just very offended it's mostly just it's just my experience and my experience reading that was just it's ruining the relaxing experience that I come to one piece for a bit it's not ruining the story I'm not saying it's ruining my enjoyment of the story flat out it's just something I want to know Tom because it did bother me some that's just me so for the change of the camera placement I had to take a bit of a break. Anyways, what I was going to move into is the volume 22. Kind of where the story is going here is something, it gets more like blotty. It's not, it's fighting. It's still like fight scenes, but it has more kind of intrigue about it when it's not just these fights. Like, they, like I said, I don't want to keep on defending myself. I think you understand me. Like it's, it's, I didn't dislike those fight scenes, but this is where the fight scenes got like kind of, Am I holding the right volume? I'm not. <laughs> this is where the fight scenes got like more interesting. Again, I keep talking about character dynamics, but I'm really enjoying when these characters meet up and just like all these kind of surprising things that are occurring. Like, I can't tell whether Miss All Sunday, is she, is she not a villain? I don't, if she's a villain, She's my favourite villain so far. Really vibing with her. If she's not a villain, that's really interesting. I'm really enjoying what's being done here. And I'm also like, because I just stopped by at the scene and the girl, kind of the place where they walked into the crypt. I don't know what place it is. With the hieroglyphs. They're not hieroglyphs, they're called something else. And I'm really interested. I have no idea where the story is going to go from here. And even... Mr. O, crocodile dude, whatever he's called. I don't have like an necessarily emotional investment in him. I'm not, I, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say I like him or I love him or whatever, but he still might be my favorite of the villains that we've gotten. I'm talking about like the main bad guys. Like, so I won't say I enjoy Missile Sunday and like Bon Clay better than him, but about the main, of, of the main villains i think i enjoy him the best because first of all i just really like his skill his talent his his sandiness i enjoy that and i kind of enjoy how he's influenced the plot and whatever I'm, I'm not actually sure what to say about that just that's just kind of more of a i know it instead of i can explain it again just like cool scenes with luffy nothing to note about i didn't necessarily feel the absence of Luffy in the way as I was like missing him or whatever or that I was even thinking about oh he's been gone quite a while but when he showed up I went oh my god yes we've got Luffy Luffy's back I think I put a no on there yeah, yeah I definitely did this is this is I definitely noticed his return I don't think I've got much else to say I'm really excited to see like my intrigue definitely came back again once everyone was kind of connected we have this countdown we've got this intrigue with what, what is miss miss all sunday doing like what is with this hero clip so there's something like pluton and i keep i'm thinking about pluto and i don't think it has got anything to do anything to do with that dwarf planet um but also like i was not expecting this scene with goza goza kuza kuza goza I don't know how to pronounce his name. And I don't know what's gonna go down. I'm, I just, I'm literally just rumbling on, I just, just go and read. Are you bloody kidding me? Okay, now it comes out. <laughs> um, Hi, I finished the Arabasta saga. Also, yes, the lighting in this video is incredibly inconsistent and it will be incredibly inconsistent throughout this update because Finnish weather. I the sun is literally in and out of a cloud every minute or so. It was properly sunny, like not in and out of a cloud when I was when I was starting to set up the camera. And for the last fifteen minutes, it's been like this. So I do apologize. Hi, I've got notes. I'm not going to pick up the volumes that I read. First of all, because I haven't got my tabs in them anymore because I've probably organized. Secondly, well done. I already did that and it ended in disaster. So I'm just gonna go through my notes and I'm trying to be more coherent because I haven't got much time to edit this. Why am I rumbling on? Good question. My first note. <laughs> I should probably just first say what I thought about the Arabesque saga arc, all of it generally. I liked it. 
like uh, talking about the arc. I liked Arabus the arc. Uh, we're going to go into my like highlights and my lowlights and all of it. But in general, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. It didn't make me go. I'm so in love with One Piece, like I predicted um, with the, the drum, uh, doing my Drum Island arc update. But like I said, thoroughly enjoyed the Arabasta arc, but it had its problems. Uh, with Arabasta Saga, I did enjoy it quite a bit less plot wise, story wise. Than. I'm having a lag at the minute, but I do know what it's called, but the first saga. It's not because I'm suddenly like, oh, I don't like One Piece. I don't want to continue reading One Piece. No, I'm not even saying that it's bad or I disliked it. It's just, it, it was more, yeah, it's good. It's good soup. I like enjoying, I, I enjoy following these characters. I, I like to be here, but it's not like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to the next volume. I can't wait to get to the next chapter. I can't wait to get to the next arc. I'm still really excited to where we're going to go with the next saga because from what I've had is that wait and see and the best arcs and the best sagas are still to come. So I'm really looking forward to that but I'm just going to go through my actual notes about Arabasta. And I did find out that it's Arabasta. It's weird because like Zoro is so, apparently sometimes translated as Zolo in the English translations but in the Finnish one he's always translated like Zoro and Basically all they are, words well, are translated as R, having R even when in the English translation is translated as, it, as having an L. But Te was the reverse of it, where it was translated as Alabasta instead of Arabasta. But I will be calling it Arabasta. My first note is basically my like biggest positive and biggest kind of reason why I really enjoyed the Arabasta arc. And it's just that I really enjoyed Vivi's story because that's what this was. I, It's Vivi's story. <laughs> that is what it is. And I really enjoyed Vivi's like backstory but more so like how everything that we see of her with the, the few fa flashbacks and with throughout like the saga and how all that comes together in the Arabasta arc that I really enjoyed. Basically Vivi I'm gonna come back to that. I had this note much later on, but I'm just gonna say right here. Vivi is my second favorite character after Luffy. I absolutely loved Vivi. And that's basically what I really loved about this arc. But that's how we also get to the criticisms that I've got. And first criticism I wrote down was that I just, I don't think we got quite enough of Vivi's backstory of like flash, flashbacks with Vivi and all of that, because I feel like when when we had Barisay, when we had Arlen Parker, we really focused in on those backstory moments, those character building moments. And I get it that those characters are still part of the crew and they will continue alongside the crew much for, like for much longer, whereas we've left Vivi behind, which I did predict. But still, I would have wanted kind of more of that, more on the level of that, because I feel like there, it really worked and the amount of like characters have really made me thoroughly really connect with kind of the character story there. With Vivi, the reason why I connected with Vivi so much is just because of the character, because of what kind of her character she is. But because of that same reason, I feel disappointed by, well, I mean, we didn't get a little of her, but I relatively how little we got of her, especially considering I think this is the longest arc we've yet had. So that's a bit disappointed, but it's not just Vivi. I don't think we really got enough of any of the characters within like Arabasta that are not like the villains or our main crew. So Koza, that I think that's how you pronounce his name. I was really excited to get him. I remember, I think it was in my first update where I was like, I'm really excited to see more of him. I'm really excited to meet him. I'm really excited for him to interact with our crew. And we really didn't get any of that. I mean, we got some of it, but his role was so much smaller than I was expecting that I wanted. And I felt really disappointed by that. I felt like cheated. I felt like he was teased so well. And yeah, he connected with the story and he connected with Vivi's story, but I just, I don't, I think we focus too much 
on our main group, which sounds weird because like that's kind of the point. I understand why someone might be like, that's that's a weird criticism to have. Like, why would you want to focus in you know, on more of these like side characters? But I just think we we focus in on the wrong things or like things that didn't interest me that much too much like we spent so much time on those fight scenes which weren't badly done which I did enjoy like much more than I've done like often in the past but thinking in hindsight it's, it's much more so that I have all these problems with the arc in hindsight rather than in the moment when I was reading it and like the amount of time we spent on those fights like so many of the fights and like build up and the build up was stellar but like all of that time and then it felt like so little was spent on some of these things that I think should have been built up better I think the story itself kind of just it started out really well and then it kind of just turned into okay so what we're gonna do with the story now is just conflict 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 but like not like not the kind of interesting conflict that we had in the beginning which had all these layers and like sure we had some of that later on but a lot of it ended up just being fight 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 and then great wrap up but something that felt like too little, too late. I'm not following my notes. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go back to my notes because I could go, I could go in a rumble. Let's go on a positive note here yeah, because this is a very random note here in in the middle, and that is Vivi also called Chopper Tony because everyone was like, oh, it's so it's so cute that you call Chopper Tony. Oh, they were really you probably didn't say cute, but Tony Vivi also did that, so I'm not alone in that. <laughs> but but going back to my previous point because I just saw that my next note is literally on the same vein and I'm so sorry but I forgot to mention like yeah it really comes back to all of that because Pell is another character which I liked and they did so little with him what they did was good but I don't think it paid off well enough the only reason why I think his ending was really solid was just the way Oda did it but Oda did it in the same way he always does but it works but it's just that last scene where he sacrificed himself and then we get this flashback that made me go Oda you bastard but he's another character that I think we've got a, got a, a bit more of him I'm not gonna get got, got up on this point but I just like for the length of this arc I think we focused a bit too much on the wrong things but I can't like I let's move on let's move on this is very random now i don't i'm not gonna elaborate this is just but i do want to read out this now because i didn't write it down i love this group and how they encourage each other and then roast the shit out of each other yeah i just i love the dynamic of our crew like when i'm saying i wish they spent less time on our crew and more time on like the side characters what i most mean by that is like we focus a lot on our crew within those fight scenes and that time could have been spent in more of like character backstory story stuff but like again uh, like i try to get it through my mind i like i'm not reading sandman i'm not reading adult targeted heavy a series i'm reading something with uh, the intended audience of teenage boys and i i get that but i'm also me <laughs> so like that's just what i want that's not necessarily me saying this is done badly but that, like, that's just how i feel about it after hammering like that point to the grave i do also want to say i know i'm like hitting you constantly i'm sorry <laughs> but i do also want to say that then again i do think the villains were really well done in this arc so that time that was taken away from the kind of the good good guys was given to the villains and i do think this arc had the best villains that we've got like by far i did say that i quite enjoyed crocodile as a villain I mean, he's not like, I don't genuinely, I don't have anything to say about it. It's, like maybe he would stand out more. Like I was just trying to think of him in contrast to like other like main bad guys. Oh, I don't like how my hair looks like that. Like these villainous antagonistic characters that are not like villains, but they're just antagonistic forces to our crew. Missile Sunday, Bon Clay and Smoker. I love Smoker. Basically, and I'm basically already jumping into my next point, which is that the OPs of this Aqua, Vivi and Smoker. We already talked about Vivi, but about Smoker. I basically loved everything that was done with Smoker and Tashiki 
throughout the entire arc but especially loved that ending where they went like we'll get our rematch but oh, they stood with the group though they, they went just like we'll get our rematch and then there's a scene with like okay like was it you smoker who who's the cause of the rain with did you use the rain powder or whatever and she's like oh no of course not and um i didn't actually google about that i'm sorry guys but apparently people are very heavily disagreeing on that fact i am of the opinion that he did use it because <laughs> that's just to me how it reads it's just like oh of course i didn't of course i didn't but i understand why you might be like no he most certainly didn't use it it's just you know i don't know met metaphorical of course the rain started um i will come back to the rain by the way but this was me talking about the villains and i'm so just like glad in this surprise way because i was like i don't know if they're gonna come back i hope they do come back as i really enjoyed him when he was introduced but i did kind of think originally when he was introduced that he was going to be this kind of more stereotypical villain but whom I would think is cool and whatever but no he's such a complex character and I want to encounter him, him again I do think with you know knowing Oda I will probably encounter him again especially when he went like we'll get a rematch but I can't wait for that Vivi and I already touched on Vivi but here we I'm gonna just what I've written down about Vivi after finishing it is just this was her arc. I mean, duh. <laughs> My favourite scene uh, in the arc might have been the final speech she gives. Top tier. I was, like, I was expecting her to, like, leave the crew by the end of the saga. But when when that ending came, I was like, when, when they were like, oh, you should come with us, I was kind of feeling like, she's gonna, she's gonna make the choice to remain. Because writing-wise story-wise that is you know the correct decision to make but then when she wasn't there and i was like maybe maybe she'll continue with with the crew because like that was like hopeful thinking because i was like i really want to continue following her but then she didn't and i was like you made the right choice did you break my heart yes but you made the right choice and then we had the hand scene with the exes yep just Stella, I absolutely love that. That was like the ending of this arc, basically. Those final chapters, those were my favourites. I have this note way later on, but as we're talking about the ending, I'm just gonna... No, I'm not, because it's my final note. I'm just gonna give it to you as my final note later on. We had so many great scenes with Vivi in this arc. Another one that's, again, at the at the ending, um, at, at the end after the ending is when she's just like i want to stay awake and listen to the rain or something like that i don't know i really love that scene but like it's just just such a small and a beautiful scene and like those are the types of scenes that i love the most and kind of i don't know um yeah yeah yep 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 i've written down that i skipped the best part of Zora's speech <laughs> can i find it is the next question oh yeah 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 I'm good. I literally remembered exactly where it was at, though I don't have my notes. Because last time, I think, I was talking about how this is just a stellar bloody quote. But I completely forgot to literally just note on the fact that in the next chapter, all of this Zoro speech, oh my god, top three scenes in the arc let's do Annie's bad on the spot translation of one piece did i dodge the rocks no i knew where they wouldn't fall sword under that rock i can feel it a familiar feeling the surroundings quiet the sounds of my own heartbeat are loud at the edge of life and death that is what i suppose this is I feel the falling rocks as living creatures. To be specific, you can feel them breathe. The breath of a rock, the breath of a tree, even ground has its own. Is this what it meant? Do not cut. Does it mean feeling the breath? Is that how you cut even through iron? I can hear it, the breath of iron. It's no longer about whether I'm good enough. It doesn't matter. I won't block it. 
I can still get better. Oh my god. Top, 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 top. Actually, forget it. That is probably my favourite one. Like, you know, I was gonna end the, the entire thing with, you know, this might be one of my favourite scenes in the entire arc. That is actually probably my top five scenes in the, in, in the entirety of One Piece so far. I can't believe I literally forgot about that the last time. I was just like an idiot. Okay, so where we ended last time was when just when they entered the crypt or whatever. And that, hey, you know, I was so like ecstatic and kind of hopeful because it was really interesting. And I really did like what Oda did there with Crocodile and Missile Sunday and all of that. But I also kind of felt disappointed. I do think that we're gonna return to Pluton <laughs> you know, all of that. But it just, I don't know. <sighs> Phone. Apparently not. That ended quick. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm just gonna read through my notes. Because I could, I could like hypothesize, hypothesize, hypothesize. That's what I hate. I hypothesize about that for a long time. But it's a, it's a mixed bag. I love it. I feel a bit deprived of things, but it's just, I've written down. I did genuinely think Miss All Sunday died when Crocodile stabbed her, but I'm really excited where, with where we're gonna go with her. And yeah, actually, I didn't see it coming that she was gonna join the crew at the end. I was really taken by surprise by that, but like in a good way. It was like, yeah, it makes sense, especially with how she's been developed throughout the, throughout the arc. And I'm really excited because like I said, I think the last time and definitely how I felt throughout the end of it, end of the, basically throughout the, the latter half of this arc, she's my favorite villain we've gotten so far. Obviously from now on she won't, I can't call her my, like my favorite villain anymore, but like she's been a villain. So I will label her as my favorite villain we've gotten so far. So I'm really excited with where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do, because there's so much that can be done. Again, I don't think she will be a character who we, like whom we will have for a long time, like Vivi, but I do think I'm really gonna enjoy having her abroad. I just got flashbacks for saying abroad <laughs> several times the last time. Anyways, then I've got a note about Luffy's fight and I really did enjoy a lot about Luffy's fight with Crocodile just because Luffy has got such great quotes throughout his fights and even when I'm not enjoying the fight so much per se on their own. I'm really enjoying like what Oda's doing kind of behind the fight. But I did also enjoy a lot of the aspects of the final fight. I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as I did the mid arc fight. But like I said, Livia has got great quotes and one thing I put the hell. Uh, one thing I did write down was the quote that I really loved which was what Luffy said about Vivi's land and how that's what Crocodile had stolen and especially when he went she should be able to laugh here i don't think i have to say anything more i think that speaks for itself another thing is how he used his blood to win the fight that that made me go i love that i, I can't say nothing else about it but just i love that and another final like final final thing that i really loved about like the ending conclusion of the arc like battling conclusion of the arc is how it started raining where Vivi went the battle has ended and like she was like please stop fighting dudes and then the rain started that was I think that was poetic and when the king was like I thank you and how I've translated it Luffy goes it's nothing I really enjoyed that basically oh and after the ending kind of I really like the aftermath, the fallout, everything after the ending is really always kind of my favourite aspect of a story. I really, I really like the fallout. One thing I really remember is when Toto, it's it's the entire little sea which we have with Toto. Top tier, haven't got anything else to say about that, just top tier. But the main thing that I've got to say, that I've got to read to you, is the final kind of speech made by the king. This I've actually properly translated, so you don't have to have my rubbish translation of it. Regret is completely natural. So is frustration. We have lost a lot without gaining anything, but time doesn't stop. 
whoever you fought against, it's over now. No one is capable of erasing the past. Your task is now to move forwards. Your task is to live. Just stellar conclusion. Like I might have my gripes with this arc and like how they executed the story, but the ending I just really loved. And I've said that I've got a lot of praise left here at the end of it because um okay, well I, I just realized I've got I've got a criticism, but then we're gonna go back to praise. I'm just gonna I do want to give you all of my thoughts, so I'm just going to be honest and I'm going to not dwell on this, but I do want to know. I did find the scene at the bathhouse where the, the crew spied on the girls. Annoying, iffy. Like, I think the reason why I find it more annoying is because this is targeted at young boys and it very much does normalise dubious consent, make something that is a genuine problem a source of humour and it's already a problem, like the concept of consent and especially young boys not realising where the line of consent goes, that it's made a joke because it's often made a joke to us when we try to say hey that's that's going over the border so that that i've just found a bit annoying but now we're gonna go to my final praise oh, i'm gonna come back <laughs> good evening ladies and gentlemen and my break was a bit longer than i had intended but i'm here now to conclude my thoughts on the arabasta arc i had three notes actually i had two notes yeah i had two notes left and one was that i'm really excited that we have got chango back because i think i said earlier on in the in the vlog that I was kind of a bit sad <laughs> that I felt like his minisodes were coming to the end and they did. About the sea star dude that we've got enough towards, I'd I was, frankly, I've, again, we've fallen into the same problem of, um, I, I literally forgot his last minisode by the time the next one comes because I'm not interested. I like where Chango, who we've gotten back and I'm super excited to see him in our actual like, story narrative again and that was also unexpected because i did expect him to return at some point but not so soon especially because we still haven't got buggy back and my final notes that i did want to end on that i almost brought up early early on is that what i was gonna say is that this is battling that vv scene it's my favorite scene within the arc but as we know zoro speech is my favorite scene within the arc but this is battling Vivi scene that's my second place favorite scene which is of course like Bonclay's sacrifice that entire when he holds the ship for them and then they're like you guys leave and then he has that it's, I think it is his singing or whatever but that entire scene because they are friends that was a stellar scene and I really genuinely enjoyed Bonclay I don't want it to come across as if my com uh, comments about Bonclay were criticisms of the characters. I've really enjoyed him. It's just the writing around him, I don't know how I felt about it. But especially at the end, I was not thinking about that at all. I was just, dude, I like you, dude. That's all. That's all. There was a lot I loved within this arc. Vivi, top tier. Top tier. And a lot of other things. I'm not going to go through the list again because I've mentioned basically everything. There's a lot I loved but I also have my criticisms and have my gripes about the arc and the entire saga. I think this saga is unfortunately a step down from East Blue Saga but I do believe Oda is going to come back on track and I do believe that we are even going to go to further heights but even if this is going to continue to be like a full star like etching between like sometimes it's a 4.5 sometimes it's a three star read I, i'm still gonna go on never gonna quit this because it's just fun uh one thing i do want to also know and is i know someone might like suggest like and i know gavin does the whole he reads this chapter he talks about the chapter he reads the chapter he talks about the chapter i'm not gonna do that i know someone might be suggesting that because i know that for me it would take the fun out of it i know i Personally, know that I could do that with like the Sandman. Obviously, I've finished the Sandman, but like with something that I'm really critical, like analyzing and everything. 
but I did begin One Piece originally because I wanted it to be a fun series that I can read before I go to bed and be like, this is just a way to relax. And I do so want to have One Piece be that, even though I am documenting my experience, experience and documenting my thoughts on it. So I don't want to do that just because it would, it would, it would put so much pressure on me. And I know already I don't have the most time to do these updates. And as I still at the minute live home, I also don't have that many like times during which I can give you my thoughts without background noise so that's basically it <laughs> sorry if that will disappoint someone but those were my thoughts on it and I will return next month with the next saga I don't actually know what the next saga is called so until then I hope you had fun I hope you <laughs> didn't get awfully inf offended by my more critical thoughts on one piece of well i did still really enjoy it and i just want to be honest and share my experience with this story that i do really enjoy even though i might sound a bit disappointed at the end of it i'm not going to remember my criticisms that much because at the end of it i'm just going to remember the fun i had that was repetitive i'm gonna go now so bye